Hi, you entrepreneurs. Today we have Linda Sunshine West. She is a global mastermind coach with an emphasis on female entrepreneurs. Her company is Living Live. She tells in this podcast her history of a abusive relationship, abusive family, yet she made a change. She made a change and she wants to make a change in everyone's life out there. Please listen, please subscribe, and, and tell your friends. Welcome to the Road to Growth, Success of an Entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with real estate agent Vinny SD. All right, so we are here with uh, Linda Sunshine West. You are a global mastermind coach, and the name of your company is Living Live Incorporated. Yep. Correct? Okay. So you primarily focus with women, correct? Yes. Okay, and you have a, a big passion, a big goal for to help out, would you say, a, a million female entrepreneurs? Five million. Five million. Wow. Five million, jump, yeah. jump it up. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> Hey, you know, there's the 5X, 10X, whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> like from 1 million to 5 million. Why not? Why not? It gives you something to strive for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You shoot for the stars, you get the sun, you're still good to go. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so what, where did this passion come from to, to help uh, female entrepreneurs? Well, I, I grew up in an abusive alcoholic household. My dad was very uh, verbally abusive, physically abusive, and emotionally abusive. And like a lot of people, I married someone just like my dad, mm -hmm. you know, my first marriage. And I was with that, my first husband for two years. And it was two years of constantly, like every single day, hearing you, you're stupid, you're ignorant, wow. you know, people are only nice to you because they feel sorry for you. He would yell that at the top of his lungs on a daily basis. So wow. I heard that and I believed him. You know, so after growing up with my dad and seeing how my dad treated my mom and then my first husband treated me that way, that was kind of stuck in my mind. I mm -hmm. really thought I was stupid. I thought I was ignorant. I thought I had no value on this planet. Why am I here? And so fast forward, um, I met my current husband four years after I left my first husband. And we've been together now for 31 years. How, how do you get the power to leave? Because from what I understand, like, and you're in an abusive relationship, you just never, it's too hard to leave sometimes. It's hard, for sure. I didn't have support. You yeah. know, I, the people I knew in my life were all the people that were like what I was, you yeah. know, an abused you know, woman that we just didn't know how to support each other. But there was one day where my daughter was four weeks old, my son was 14 months old, and I, it's like it hit me. I'm not going to live my mom's life. And I realized I was living on a daily basis, the life my mom had been living to that point in about 30 years, 35 oh. years or so. And I was like, I'm not gonna live that life. And I just made a decision and I literally packed up my, um, I, my daughter had a little carrying case, you know, I packed her up in that, I put my son on my hip, a diaper bag on one shoulder, a purse on the other shoulder, and I literally walked out. I wow. say walked out because I didn't have a car. I mean, I walked out because I realized, uh, like I snapped. Yeah. And it was like, I know what I'm not going to do anymore. I don't know where I'm going, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to survive, but that didn't matter to me. I just knew what I was not going to do. And right. so I just literally just closed the door and I walked out. So when you walked out, was that the end of your ex? Yes, pretty much. You know, um, I still try to keep him in my kid's life. Mm. And so I would contact him like once a week, um, have him talk to the kids and that was actually a bad thing. Like I thought it was great, right? I'm letting them get to know their dad and all this stuff. Well, my daughter, by the time she was eight, she had been talking to him weekly and thought he was this amazing person. Yeah. And so she had him on a pedestal. Like, oh, my dad would never make me do this. My, she would just get so mad at me because I would have her wash the dishes or put away her clothes. My dad would never make me do that, you know? So a couple of years later, um, so in the interim, he had been paying child support but I had been paying him back because he couldn't afford it yeah so like I had this really weird mentality I don't know what it's all about but I was I just kept sending his money back because I didn't want to hurt him yeah you know I because he was the father of my kids and so um it was about when my kids again they were about eight or nine or so I finally let my kids live with him for a while oh, wow. he wanted them all the time but he was a drug addict and he had stopped doing drugs then he has started paying the child support and I stopped sending it back. So he started showing me that he could be a model yeah. father for his kids. And so it was, you know, a couple years of me deciding, should I have them go with him or not? I didn't want to, but I didn't want what I wanted to stop my kids from getting to know their father. Yeah. Because they were just knowing what I was telling them about him. 
So they moved in with their father. Um, he, I'm in California. He was in Ohio. And they moved in with him for like two years. And my daughter was like, same old shit. You know, I want to come back home. Oh, so wow. we brought my daughter back home. And since then, she rarely has any contact with her dad. Oh, and she's 35 now. Wow. So, you know, for all those years, she's just really realized who he was, yeah. you know. But it was a hard decision for me to do that. Mm. And I didn't want them to experience any kind of abuse, which, thank goodness, they didn't. Mm. But um, it was important for them to get to know him so that they could know him, not what I was yeah. telling them of him. So four years passed, you find your new husband. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That was actually pretty interesting how that happened because I had, after I left my first husband, I was trying to find a father for my kids, you know? So I would date and date and I just dated so many different people. And then I would do like, I would date, I would call them like genres, right? I would date only rich guys or I would date only buff guys or I would date only nice guys or I would date, like I had little genres of of men I would date. And nobody really fit me, you know? Mm. They didn't want the kids or they didn't want me or what have you. And then I took a break. I was like, I'm t- I was 25. I was like, I'm tired of dating. And so I read this book called How to Be Married One Year from Today. Okay. And the most important lesson I got out of that book, or the most important thing I learned, was like to make a list. Like you make a list of the top 10 things that you will not settle for in a relationship. So you have your list. When you meet somebody, you check them off. You know, do they meet all 10? If so, then that's the person for you. Well, I ended up meeting my husband, who I've been him with him now for 31 years. Wow. I met him six months after I made that list. Wow. So it's literally like the law of attraction, yeah. but in relation to relationship only, right? Yeah. And he, may, he met nine of the ten things. Mm. You're supposed to do all ten, but the tenth one was an age limit. Mm. So I was 25, and my age range that I wanted to find in a man was 27 to 32. Mm. And he was 43. So he's a lot older, 18 years older than me, like almost double my age, right? Because I was 25. And so I was like, you know what? You can't, I realized you can't let age stop you from being with somebody who is a perfect match for you. Yeah. And so it's been 31 years later. Here we are still (coughs) together. Yeah. Wow. That's impressive. Then you're fine. So that, wow, that's, that's definitely impressive. Who was the author of that book? Do you remember? I don't remember at all. I just remember the name, you know, I wish I could, I, I don't even know if it's on Amazon. Oh. You know, because it was like 31 years ago, yeah. you know, so I don't know if it's on there or not. But um, but my daughter read it, too, and um, she's still working on it, though. She's got her list, so she's still working on well, it. Well, she's out there right <laughs> <out> now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so you in the good relationship. Now, how did you get to the point of starting this company? What happened next? Yeah, so throughout all this time, until I was 51 years old, I had worked in the corporate world for 36 years Hmm. and I had 49 jobs. So I was just never happy at one place, you know, and I didn't, I never knew why, but a lot of times I, when I look back at it, it's just like my first marriage. I was like, I know what I'm not going to do, but I never was looking future. Like, what do I want to do? What am I good at? I never looked at that. I always just looked at what I didn't want to do. And I was always like running away, which goes to, I was five years old and I ran away and was gone for an entire week. So my running away started when I was five, you know, like I started running away from things I didn't want, situations I didn't want to be in Mm. since I was five years old. So, you know, I worked these 49 jobs and um, my last job was working for a judge in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And I was there for like a year and two months. And when I got to that job, I was a legal secretary for 20 years. I worked seven different law firms and then I got that job working for this judge I was working for the number two judge in the entire state of California. So, like, I made it. This is it. This is the penultimate of my career, you know? Like, I was really there without moving to Washington, D.C. to work in the Supreme Court. Like, I was there. And I realized how bored I was. I was like, oh, my God, this is is so boring for me, you know? Some other people might love it. But for me, it was just boring. It wasn't challenging my my mind at all. And um, I had hired a life coach to help me figure out you know, what's my purpose here? What am I doing here? Like, cause again, my, my ex-husband was still playing in my mind. You know, yeah. my hu- my current husband is amazing. Tells me how great I am, how smart I am and all this, but I still have my ex-husband playing in my head mm. and those words of you're stupid, you're ignorant, yeah. you know, those things. And so I, um, hired a life coach and she helped me to see that I am smart, that I am brilliant, that I have a lot going on. I have a lot of value. And that was how I kind of started unfolding, like, 
wow, I have value, you know? And there was one particular moment, like one of those aha moments where I was sitting there. I was in a conference room with about 14 other ladies attending a workshop, you know, learning how to you know, start a business and everything. And um, the lady at the proctor or whatever, she asked a question and I actually answered. And I was shaking like a leaf because now I had actually said words out loud that people could hear and they could hear how stupid or ignorant I am, right? That's what's going through my head. And I sat down and I was shaking and the two ladies next to me said, that was brilliant. Can you repeat it? I want to write it down. Oh, wow. And like even me just saying that, I get a little bit emotional because like that moment, like I'm back in that moment right now, you know? Mm. And that was that moment, that defining moment in my life that I said, I actually have value. Yeah. It's time for me to share my voice from this moment forward. Any opportunity I have to share my voice, I will. Yeah. So that's, I'm doing podcast interviews, other kinds of interviews, because I know that there's opportunity for me to touch somebody. Maybe somebody says, I don't think I have value either. And they just need to discover it. They need to discover what it is. Cause I believe we all have value on this planet. Even those who are not doing good things, yeah. they still have value. They just haven't discovered it and they're channeling their energy in the wrong area. So, so you had a, a really bad relationship, tough, tough upbringing too. Yeah. Um, you find this very great husband that's really supportive. Mm -hmm. You still kind of have some self doubts because you had the, the history of with the ex and everything like that. Yeah. Where did the idea of, of getting a life coach actually come from? Was that something, was that, yeah. <laughs> totally unexpected, right? Um, Facebook. Okay. Yeah, I was in a, I belonged to a Facebook group, and a post came up one day, and it was this woman. She said, I've been a life coach for 20 years. I took a five-year hiatus, and I'm ready to get back in. I'm looking for five women who want to change their life. Hmm. And that was it. That was it. Those words spoke to me. I mean, I remember them. You know, yeah. this many years later, they spoke to me because I wanted to change my life. Mm. I didn't know. I was like, well, this is stupid. Like, why am I here? I'm like, uh, just like a wart on, not a wart on society in a bad way, but just like, why am I here? I have no purpose. You know, that spoke to me and I called her up and I, I started working with her immediately. So do you have any self doubt of the idea that, the idea that, Am I doing something like stupid on, on calling this person out of the blue of having a life coach? Did you have any negative, you know, attachments to the idea of a life coach? I didn't have any, I didn't even know what a life coach was. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't have any preconceived ideas. Right. Yeah. Um, now I know the difference, but, um, there's cause there's a whole bunch of different kinds of coaches out there. Yeah. But back then I didn't even know I'd been in corporate for 36 years. I didn't know what a yeah. coach was, let alone a life coach. But this was a woman who said, I'm looking for five women who want to change yeah. their life. That those that's what spoke to me. Yeah, it wasn't the life coach part. So so you have her and she starts kind of reaffirming who you are as a person, how you have value, so on and so forth. Yeah. Then what comes next? Where you go? Okay, I've gained so much from you. Now I want to give give back to other people. Yeah. So I actually um, hired her. It was August of 2014. Okay. Like there's some dates that really just stick out in your mind, right? Those dates that really change you. Um, so I worked with her for five months until November yeah. and then right at the, be the end of November before Thanksgiving, I was driving to work and I had worked with her closely. Like every week I did every single homework assignment and you know, I made a lot of uh, personal growth every single week. I was changing so much that people were commenting that, oh my God, you're so different this week than you were last week. That's how I know how much growth I was doing because oh, people wow. were telling me. It wasn't because like I thought, I didn't notice it because I was living it, yeah. you know? And so it was such like drastic, fast change and positive, just emotional change and um, becoming a positive person. I used to be extremely negative. I used to be judgmental and, and kind of mean and spiteful, you know, yeah. because I had so much hate in me that I made a complete U-turn Mm. and became a positive person. And um, so it was November that we stopped working together and I was driving to work one day. And I mean, I don't know anybody's religious beliefs who's listening here, but mine, I believe in God. And I was driving and he spoke to me and he said, you're on the wrong path. I'm going to put you on the right path. Mm. And so when I got to work, I turned in my notice. Like I quit my job and then I went home and told my husband, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I quit and then went and told my husband, and I ended up quitting that job, which was working for the judge. I had no idea what I was going to do, yeah. how I was going to make money. And that didn't matter to me because I knew I needed to follow the path that I was told I was supposed to follow. Wow. So I just made that total, like, they talk about leap of faith. Yeah. 
this was a complete 100% leap of faith. I had no idea how to run a business. I didn't know anything. And then we sold our home. So that was how we were able to finance, you know, my, my dream and passion of helping people. That's all I wanted to do. So going back to the idea that you were in that peaceful relationship and you just left one day, you got that hit because it came to you and then you just kind of looked back and boom, never looked back. And the same thing happened with you worked your way up to the height of, of your career Mm -hmm. and then just one day saying, boom, I'm, I'm leaving too. Yep. Where do you think that that comes from that, that ability that you stay with something and then just one day you're able to make that drastic change in your life? That's a great question. Um, I want to say that it goes back to that five-year-old because when I was five and I ran away one day for five, for a whole week, I would have been gone longer mm. had my, my mom knew where I was, but I didn't know she knew where I was. I was at the neighbor's house, okay. you know, my happy place. Yeah. Cause I loved that, that friend, that her family and everything. And so there was like, I had it because I'm was like, I'm fed up with the way dad treats mom and yeah. I, all that stuff. And like, I'm not living here anymore. Yeah. So I moved, you know, at five years old, I'm gone for a week and my mom calls up and says, okay, it's time to send Linda back home. Mm. So I went back home. And I believe, you know, I don't remember exactly what happened when I was five, but I believe that that was a shift moment for me to go from confident, fearless, I ran away, I'm not going to put up with your crap, you know, like at five years old, that was my, I was strong at five. Yeah. But then when I was told to come back home, I believe what happened is I let that strength um, just subside Mm. and be buried deep down inside of me, deep down inside that I ended up gaining uh, gaining so many fears throughout my life yeah. that in 2015 January 1st I woke up that morning I was like I got to do something different yeah because I've changed I've been changing my life with my life coach things are going well I've quit my job we had sold our house in a week yeah. you know like things were moving fast and so I said I've got a lot of fears I'm going to face a fear every single day this year mm. so I don't make new year's resolutions cuz I break them but I made a commitment to myself a, to a fear every single every day. day for a year. Wow. I wrote a book called the year of fears, you know, and it talks about the journey that I went on, but more importantly, it talks about the lessons that I learned. What are some of the fears that, that, that you went through? The fears might sound ridiculous to people, no, but sure. fears are fears. Yeah. Right. And that's one thing I've learned is that fear is fear is fear. Your fear could be the fear of closing doors. I don't know, you know, hmm. but for you, it's a real fear. It's yeah. legitimate to you. So some of the fears were, um, like talking to people. Cause again, remember I had in my head that I'm stupid and ignorant. Yeah, yeah. So if I talk to people, they might, they might see how ignorant I am. Yeah. They might hear the stupid things I say. So, um, networking events. Oh my God. Oh my God. I hated them. Mm. Now I just dislike them, but I was so scared, but I knew like people were saying, if you have a business, you have to go out there. And I'm like, I gotta go That's talk good. to people. Yeah. I was scared to talk to people doing a podcast interview. It was during that year of fears because I was scared, you know, I was, um, uh, just fears of, of sharing my voice. Yeah. It was scary for me, but I knew I had to do it because I knew I had value and now I need to start sharing it. Speaking on stage, I've been conducting interviews, you know, I've, like I've interviewed the president of Mexico, Vicente oh, wow. Fox. Wow. I recently interviewed, uh, Wesley Snipes. Wow. Yeah. So I've interviewed some really high Hi, people, right? That like we look at, we really look at up at them because they're celebrities. How, how do you get them? Uh, <laughs> More stories, right? Yeah, like, oh exactly. My gosh. Yeah, so a lot of this, um, this fear journey that I went on of facing fears every single day, it, what it gave me was something I, like, I didn't even know what I might get out of it. Again, mm. a lot of things that I do are based on what I don't want to experience anymore. Yeah. And I want to change things. So I had no idea what I was going to gain from it, but yeah. I gained so much confidence to talk to people, to ask for what I want, to put myself in situations where there's opportunities and I actually seize the opportunities. Like I had lunch with Jack Canfield for two hours one day just because there was an opportunity and I grabbed him by the arm. I said, I'm going to take you to lunch. And he goes, okay. It's just like that, right? It's like sometimes there are opportunities, uh, there's opportunities around us all the time, but we don't see them as opportunities. And then, or we have fear stop us from taking up on that opportunity. Mm. So the Vicente Fox and, and actually, um, who else? Uh, well, um, Wesley Snipes. Vicente Fox was last year. I had started attending an event called Secret Knock back in 2015 during my year of fears. It was March. Hmm. And I attended that event, and it was so cool because I really met some amazing people. 
One of them was the creator and co-founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Oh, wow. So I ended up meeting him there. And since then, I've become an executive producer for a film coming out called The Wish Man. It comes out next week, actually June 7th. And um, because I'm a part of that, that click, I guess you can call it, right? Mm -hmm. So by attending Secret Knock, it really helped me to learn even more about who I am and what value I have to yeah. offer because they're very supportive and uplifting people. And um, about two years after attending that event, you know, uh, I had attended it four times, um, I thought, what would it be like to volunteer? Mm. You know, I want to, like, step into a different – I want to see what it's like to be behind the scenes on this event. And maybe I meet different people. Yeah. So I did that. I volunteered for a year and a half. And then – the um the girl who was organizing the event she moved so the guy who puts on the event his name is greg reed he's one of my mentors mm. he said hey do you want to do you want to step in and become the organizer and i said yes of course you know i had put on a lot of events like over 100 events by then so i had experience putting on events and that was the door so it's called secret knock right like i knocked on that door and i opened it and i ran in with a vengeance like i'm mm. here you know but that door, opening that door, it was what got me. I got to sit with Les Brown for a couple hours, you know, just talk about me and who I am, and he helped me wow. with my signature speech. Um, the Jack Canfield meeting him was because of the relationships I built through Secret Knock. Um, Vicente Fox, he was one of our speakers at our event, and so I just contacted his secretary. He said, put me on his calendar to interview him in his suite, like he was head of present presidential suite. And I said, just put me on the calendar, and I'll be there to interview him, and she got me in. Um, uh, same like Wesley Snipes that was interesting he actually walked right by me we're on the red carpet and I was interviewing people and I saw him and I knew I wanted to interview him I told my videographer we're going to get him no matter nobody else I don't care about I just want Wesley Snipes and so he walked right past me like he just walked and I was I saw him like two or three feet people away from me and he was being asked all these questions and then I felt that sense that he was finishing up the conversation I grabbed his arm and I pulled him back Oh, gosh, and I nice. said, you know, Mr. Fox, we're going to interview you. And I just like went right into it, you know. Yeah. And then Kevin Harrington. His was an amazing interview because um, Ke when I interviewed Kevin, um, I also had him on my schedule. Mm. You know, I had his secretary put him on my schedule. And so I, I went straight to him. I said, Kevin, here's what I need. I need this, this, this. And he goes, okay, let's go. Roll camera. And we just, I went straight into the interview and I got exactly what I wanted from him. Oh, nice. What was different, different about that interview is I had more confidence I had started gaining more and more confidence mm -hmm. by doing well, interviewing these people, but I knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so it's really changed um, since Kevin's interview. It's really changed the way I interview people because now I actually know what I'm looking for future. Yeah. Because remember, I live my life through not what I don't want. Now I'm starting to live my life with what I do want yeah. in the future. So it's totally changed the way I operate everything I do now. That's fantastic. So. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff that you've picked up and you, you've learned, is that what you teach your people? Yeah, I teach them how to, because you know, everybody has their own journeys that they're on. Not everybody wants to interview stars on the red carpet, you mm. know, so I can help them get there if that's what they want. I can help that. But my clients really are, they have a lot of fears themselves. Okay. So I help them through, whether it's money blocks, you know, a lot of people have money fears. I mm. did too. I used to equate money with love. And so, because my dad, when he would, you know, do something, he when he would do something mean, he would make it up with money. He would buy us food, or he would he'd take oh, us out yeah. somewhere, or he'd buy us clothing, or he'd take us to the movies. Yeah. So, it, like that was his way of showing his love. Like I really oh. do love you. Here, here's something I'll buy you. Yeah. So I equated money to love. And so when I first started my business, I, it was a, a huge epiphany for me because I realized that the reason I wasn't asking for money from people mm. to you know, to work with them is because what if they say no? And if mm. they say no, it means that they don't love me. Yeah. So I equated it to love and it was just a crazy thing. But so I help my clients with, you know, money blocks with, um, just asking, Oh my gosh, yeah. just picking up the phone and dialing. Yeah. You know, it's a really, um, hard thing for a lot of people is to, to face that possible. No. Yeah. All right. So I help them with that and I, um, like guide them through that process as well as hold their hands through the process. There, there's a, I forgot who said it, but I was listening to this one person talk, and they're saying that the way they change, I mean, they change the way they look at no's. They say, okay, so in essence, whatever you're, you're asking for, it might be um, 99 no's to get that one yes. Right. And so every time you get that no, you say thank you. 
because you get me one step closer to that yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like a kind of interesting way of how you look at things. Yeah. And there's a book called, I haven't read it myself, but I hear about it all the time, Go for the Nose. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's like the same Thanks. premise, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, it really changes your mindset. But I think also like it's an easy um, system to follow, yeah. but also to get into your psyche of why are you scared of no. Yeah. And really, why are they saying no? Because if once you can t learn how to speak to people and learn what their needs are yeah. and what their wants and desires are, why are you not being able to push them into the yes? Because yeah. if we let them walk away, if you're with somebody mm. and you know you are the transformation for their life, mm. why are you letting them walk away? Yeah. You just let them walk away and now they're not going to change their life Yeah. because you were too scared to move them into your program. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, it's really, it's really amazing. Like just me learning that is like, whoa! I'm being selfish. Yeah. By not moving them, moving them into my program. Yeah. No, yeah. I I totally agree with that mindset. There's definitely stuff that I picked up in, in that too. Yeah. In in, in my field. Um, now, so going on this path and, and building your your business, what kind of hurdles have you had to overcome to to get there? Because it wasn't all roses and <laughs> not at all yeah <laughs> well you know i'll share the the first event i did so when i left my corporate job again i didn't know what i was going to do how i was going to make money who i was going to help i just didn't know i was going in blind right yeah. but i realized for 51 years of my life i had been pent up you know i had allowed myself to not explore life and and not do things because of the fears i had those fears really weighed me down yeah so when i left my corporate job i was like i got to do everything because, you know, it's like I had been caged for 51 yeah. years, and now you have released the beast, you know, and I'm here to do everything. So I literally started seven different things at one time. Oh, wow. Out of the gate, seven, and nobody could tell me. People would tell me you shouldn't do that, but I would not listen. And I realized why – the reason I wouldn't listen, I didn't realize it till later, yeah. is because I needed to lead. Like, I needed to lead me. Mm. I needed to be in charge of me. I needed to make the decisions. Yeah. Right decisions, wrong decisions didn't matter. I needed to step into me leading my own life because I had been a people pleaser my whole life. Yeah. Even though my like husband is amazing and supportive, yeah. I still had been scared. Like what if he leaves me? If I what if I say something and he leaves me? Yeah. He wasn't going to leave me, but those were my own beliefs. Mm. So I needed to step out and lead. So the very first event I put on was called Lemon Zest and Garlic Fest and Absolutely amazing. Uh, had a team that came together to help me put on this big food festival. And I ended up losing $70,000 wow. from one event because I wouldn't listen to anybody. And I wouldn't listen to anybody because I needed to lead. Wow. What's interesting is I look at that. At the beginning, I was like, that wasn't smart for me to not listen to anybody. Hmm. you know. But I realized it's a path I had to take in order for me to be where I am today. Yeah. Right. But yeah, we lost $70,000. I didn't have any sponsors. I didn't charge enough for vendors. You know, I didn't uh, try to cut deals with anybody for, you know, so I just went in, I, I got to do this event. I just yeah. had to do it. I knew I was going to lose money, but I went in anyway. We ended up having 700 people in attendance. So it was awesome that way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was the first one. And then the next one, I only lost 10,000. So I look at it as a 700% increase. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's all in how you look at it. But that next event I did, it was called Berry Best Chocolate Fest. Like I like fun names. Right. Yeah. And it was a chocolate festival. We had 3,500 people in attendance. Wow. So people are like, you had 3,500 people in attendance. How did you lose $10,000? Yeah. I didn't charge enough. I didn't have sponsors. I didn't learn. I learned a lot from the first one. Yeah. But I didn't learn enough that I would come out, you know, ahead. I, I still, a 700% increase. I was proud of myself. <laughs> so for events now that you put on, what are some of the, the nuggets that people should really focus on? Well, I don't uh, put on events right now, you okay. know, because I, I realized that that was not my zone of genius, okay. obviously, because I wasn't making any money. <laughs> I have a, an ability to uh, bring people together in communities, you know, mm. building communities. But uh, I am looking at putting on a women's event, okay. a speaking event, you know, not a food festival. Yeah. And w that event will be, you know, female speakers coming in to teach us about, you know, growth and how to grow our businesses and things like that. So that, like the key is having sponsorships. Okay. So one thing I've learned along the, the, the way is that you need to get your sponsorships to pay for the entire event. Yeah. And then everything else is money that's profit. Oh, wow. And so I didn't realize that. Another thing is I never even put together a budget for the first one. Oh, wow. And, and my sister was like, you got to put together a budget. Like, I don't want to know the numbers. Like, I was just so ignorant to it because I wanted to lead. Like, I needed to lead. Yeah. That was what I had to do. I mean, 
business people would look at it and say, well, that was stupid. Well, yeah, you know what? But I was going through a lesson I needed to go through in my life. Yeah. And that was leading. I had 10 people that showed up in my life yeah. right when I needed them in the exact positions that I needed them in. Like a volunteer coordinator showed up. You know, an accounting person showed up. So it was really great that these people came to me exactly when I needed them. But I got to have them to learn how to lead them. Yeah. And that was what I got out of that. It was incredible. You know, a very expensive lesson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would have cost me four years of college, right? Mm. And I would have spent more money in college. And I wouldn't have had the hands-on lesson. So It's definitely a, a positive crash, way of looking at crash it. Crash course. What, is, <laughs> what does Jim Rohn say? It's... Uh, it, life is not about what we're given, but it's how we perceive it. Yeah. Something like that. It really is, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, I could have seen that and cried in my milk or whatever. But, no, I was, like, at that end of that day, I knew I'd lost money. And my friends and I were like, next year's going to be so much better. Like, we were already ready for next year. Wow. Because my, my mindset never went into negativity. It was so, amazing. So, for people that are looking to get, or maybe even your younger self, that, that individual that was just getting out of the, um, the breakup, what kind of advice would you give those two separate individuals? Someone looking to get into the field or maybe your younger self? Oh, gosh. Um, first is find mentors and coaches mm. who are successfully doing what you want to do. There's a lot of mentors and coaches out there, but not all of them are successful. Yeah. Because, you know, they're like right now it's like coaching. Everybody's yeah. jumping out. Like, I'm a coach, you know, and they haven't done any of the work, you know. Yeah. And so they need to be successful. That's one thing I learned because I, I had hired coaches. Hmm. My, my life coach was amazing, changed my life, right? But then it was time for me to go find business coaches or like a funnel coach. You know, like there's so many coaches. Hmm. And not all of them were successfully doing what they were doing. Yeah. But they were cheap, so that's why I went with them. Yeah. So really look for those people who are successfully doing what you want to do. Makes that's sense. the And listen to them and take their advice. My current mentor now, his name is Greg Reed. You know, I mentioned him a mm. little earlier, but anything Greg tells me, I just do it. Yeah. I don't even think about it anymore because he's successful. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, make, it makes sense. Now, if someone's looking for, for coaching themselves, maybe a, a female entrepreneur, how would they be able to get in contact with you or pick your brain or see if it's a good fit? Yeah, with me, uh, my website is Living Live Inc. Dot com and then also they can have a free 30 minute session with me if they want to just you know we can see how we could work together you know if, if there's something i can help them with living live com slash 30 the number three zero fantastic yeah. well I, I appreciate linda all the information you've given us it's uh it's definitely a powerful story of of coming from that past right there and now you have such a, a positive mindset i would think other people would would wallow in that in that sadness that they kind of came from but you have a really positive mindset on it yeah if i hadn't done the work like with my life coach you know i wouldn't have had the same mindset and that's what's key we have to do the work on it within ourselves yeah. you know people come into our lives and can help us in positive ways and negative ways and so it's up to us to do the work yeah it's it's definitely you know everyone listening right now hopefully you got some some great information great tidbits it doesn't matter where you are you could be in a bad relationship you could be in a bad job you could be just in a bad place but today could be the day that you you make that change can i just share one last please, one please. last thing is um the acronym for fear they often say it's you know false evidence appearing real Hmm. I've heard face everything and run, you know, those are the different acronyms. But what I discovered throughout this um, journey that I've been on, especially that year of facing a fear is I realized that about six months into facing a fear every single day hmm. that I had faith that what I was doing was right. And I realized that my faith was so strong that it erased my anxious reactions. So I came up with fear erases anxious reactions. Oh, wow. When your faith is strong, your fear is weakened. It might not disappear, but it'll be weakened because you cannot have faith and have, you cannot have full faith and full fear at the same time. It's impossible. So have faith. And if you're fearful of what you're doing, check your faith. Wow. Just check into your faith and say, oh, yes, I got this. I'm doing the right thing and do it anyway. Perfect. Well, thank, thank you again, Linda. And hopefully, again, everyone got some, some great information. Please subscribe, tell your friends, give, uh, give Lind Linda a ring, and your yeah. life could be changed any, any moment. Right. All right, thanks, well, thank guys. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for listening to The Road to Growth, Success of an Entrepreneur. Please like, subscribe, and stay connected. Visit www.vinnysd.com. Yeah, I created a website. Hope to see you again next week. Team Vinny SD, signing off.